right, go ahead and take your seat if you would just for a moment. Worship team, thank you very, very much. I want to ask you to turn in your Bibles, please, to Mark chapter 5. I've been teaching the last couple of weeks about faith. It's one of my favorite things to talk about, and it's so important. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you can't please God without faith. You can't be saved without faith because the Bible says it's by grace we're saved through faith. You can't walk the Christian walk by faith because the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. You can't live on this earth for the Lord without faith because we live by faith. The just do that. The Bible says that we please God through faith. We obtain promises through faith. Faith is a very important thing. Everyone say faith. And we need to understand it. We need to understand it a lot more. And so we're not going to rush through this. Scott, all the way back there. We're not going to rush through this, my friend. We're going to take our time. We're going to grasp this, and we're going to grow together. So I want to talk today. This is part three of a series I'm doing called Because I Trust Him. Everyone say, Because I Trust Him. You can help me preach today. It's not fair. I do all the preaching. You can help me. Oh, that's kind. Thank you. Mark chapter 5 and verse 34. Let's read this together. And I want to start by saying this. I'm just going to get right into my message and... and, and Ignore the preliminaries because we worshiped a little longer and I want to jump in. Faith is a real thing. It is. It's a real thing. It's, it's as real as this pulpit. It's as real as this keyboard over here. Faith is a real thing. And sometimes I think we, we relegate faith to kind of a, a, a set of beliefs or core values or a, an adherence that we have and we all come together because, you know, we've got the same faith. That's more like our belief. And we're going to look over the next couple of weeks and see that belief and faith aren't the same thing, although they're absolutely in the same family, but they're not the same thing. And so we need to understand faith so well that we, like the Apostle Paul, can recognize it, we can understand it, we can know when it's there, we can know when it's not. And I want all of us at Gateway and anyone watching at home, I want us to be so familiar with the subject of faith because point number one I want to make today is this. Faith is a real thing. Jesus thought faith was real. Mark chapter 5 and verse 34, just for the sake of time, we'll read that one verse. And he said to her, this was the woman that had an issue of blood for 12 years, spent all she had, went to many, many doctors. And she came, she heard about Jesus and she said, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be whole. So she pressed through the crowd, and she touched him. And as soon as she touched him, power flowed out of Jesus. And he stopped the whole proceeding and said, who touched me? And the disciples said, Master, the multitude is thronging you. How can you ask, who touched me? Everyone's touching him. Everyone's bumping up against him and jostling against him. And so, but the woman, fearing what, and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before Jesus and told him all the truth. And he said, verse 34, daughter... Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Jesus evidently thought faith was a real thing. Because there was all those people jostling up against him, all those people touching him, but that woman, when she touched the hem of his garment, she was immediately healed of something she'd had for 12 years. Can you be healed immediately of something you've had for 12 years? Yes, what if you've had it for 24 years? What if you're like the man at the beautiful gate of the temple, theologians say was in his 40s, had never walked a day in his life and was healed immediately? Can that be you? Yes. Faith is a real thing. Smith Wigglesworth used to say there's something about faith that will cause God to pass by a million people and touch one. I want to be that one. I doubt there was a million people surrounding Jesus, but there was a multitude Multitude in the Bible seems to be around 2,000 people or so. Two to 3,000 people seems to qualify as a multitude. So that's enough, but that woman was healed. Jesus evidently thought it was real. He said, daughter, your faith made you whole. In Luke chapter 8, verse 24 and verse 25 says this, Then they came to Jesus and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we're perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Evidently, Jesus thought faith was a real thing that the woman with the issue of blood had, and he said to the disciples, where's yours? 
That'd be like someone walking in here without the shoes on him. He's saying, where are your shoes? Are shoes real? Yes. That's what I'm asking. Where are yours? Is faith real? Jesus evidently thought faith was real. He arose, rebuked the wind, the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Where is your faith? Let's have another look at another one. Matthew chapter 8. I, I told you, we're going to take our time with this series. The Lord's been just kind of speaking to me about this. Just Bible after Bible after Bible. Faith comes not by hearing about faith, but by hearing the Word of God. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. To my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Everyone say great faith. Did Jesus think faith was real? Is it real? Is it as real as this keyboard? Yes. And the man went home and he found that his servant was healed immediately. Jesus said, I've never seen such faith. Faith is a real thing. The woman with the issue of blood had it. When she touched the hem of his Jesus' garment, she was healed. The disciples at that moment in the boat didn't have it. He said, why have you got no faith? The centurion had great faith. So not only is it real, it can grow. It can be stronger with one person than it is with another. One person can have great faith and another one have little faith or weak faith or no faith. I want to be in the great faith category. Anyone else? So Jesus thought it was real. Here's another person that thought it was real. The Apostle Paul says this in Acts chapter 14, verse 9 and 10. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith. Everyone say he had faith. Seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leapt and he walked. Did this man have faith? Yes. So is it real? You can't have what isn't real. I can't have a three-legged, three-headed elephant. They're not real. I could have a one-headed elephant, but I couldn't have a three-headed. They're not real. But if they were, I suppose I could have one. You can't have what isn't real. But this man had faith, so faith must be real. Can you have faith? Can I have faith? Can it grow? Absolutely. Should it grow? Yes. Is it growing? We'll go with the yes. Here's another person that thought it was real, the writer of Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, he says this, Now faith is the substance. It will say faith is the substance. He's stressing it's real. It has substance to it. You can hold it. You can touch it. You can feel it. Not in the natural, but in the spirit. Faith is a real substance, as real as the hair on your head, or the hair that used to be on your head, perhaps. Let's just move on quickly, sorry. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You can't have evidence if it's not real. How do you know I've touched this iPad today? If you were a smart cookie, you could pull out your stuff and you could look for my fingerprints. And the fact that there's fingerprints on there is evidence that I've touched it. So a real something gives evidence. Faith is real. It's the evidence of things not seen. It's the substance of things hoped for. Everyone say substance. Say evidence. The writer of Hebrews evidently thought faith was real. In verse 6, he says this, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. If you can be without faith, then surely you can be with faith. It must be real. Not only is it real, it ought to be real to you. And to me, I believe that we can walk around with a, a, a tremendous awareness of the reality of faith. But we can also walk around for days, weeks, with no tangible consciousness of the fact that we have faith. A belief system, yes. 
But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the faith that obtains promises. The faith that Jesus said, even starting the size of a mustard seed, can cause you to speak to a mountain and cause the mountain to move. The faith that Jesus wanted them to have, that they could speak to wind and waves, and the wind and the waves obey them. Faith that obtains promises. Faith that is tangible. Faith that looks at sickness and disease and says, in the name of Jesus, stop. And it stops. Come on. Faith that looks at someone that is demon-possessed and that is being cast into a fire, and when others didn't have faith, because the disciple says, we, why couldn't we cast it out? He said, because you, you have no faith. And Jesus looked at that boy, and he commanded the demon to come out, and it came out immediately. What did Jesus evidently have? Faith. Strong faith. Great faith. Mighty faith. But what is it? Mark 11, verse 22 says, have the faith of God. Or another version says, have the God kind of faith. Can I tell you something pretty staggering? I'm sort of at week eight on week three, but the faith that Jesus had is actually no different to the faith that you and I can have. It may be larger because faith grows, but it's the same thing. Came the same way, operates the same way, is released the same way, and achieves the same thing. Remember, there were things that Jesus, is, Jesus was frustrated that the disciples didn't do that they ought to have been able to do. For example, cast out that demon. Is it demon or demon? There's no D at the end, is there? Cast out that demon or calm the wind and the waves. He was asleep. He said, why'd you wake me up? You should have done it. Where's your faith? Is faith real? Yes. If faith isn't real... In Hebrews 11, verse 6, we, we, would, we could never please God because the Bible says without faith you can't please God. So that's my point number one. Point number two I want to make today, and I'm not going to get further than this point, is this. Faith and belief aren't the same thing. They're not the same thing. Believing and faith are not the same thing. They're in the same family, no doubt about it, but it's not the same thing. Have a look, please. It's going to be up on the screen here, but if you've got a Bible, I'd, I'd love you to turn to it or look at it on your phone. Mark chapter 9 and verse 20. I really wish that you would bring a Bible to church. I genuinely do. I wish you'd bring a Bible and a pen. Not because it makes you more holy. It's just, it's helpful to be able to note things down and jot things down. It says the exact same thing as the Bible on your phone says. So I'm not saying you're holier because you bring your paper Bible. I'm just saying it's... It, you can't kind of write all over your phone without getting easily distracted by the messages that come in and this, that, and the other. Anyways, look in your Bibles. Mark chapter 9 and verse 20. Then they brought him to him. This is what I was referring to a minute ago where Jesus cast the demon out of this little boy. Or a boy, I think it was little. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed the boy. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. So I presume he's not a child now, but from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Look at verse 24, and this one, this where I want to park this message today. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Let's conclude the story and then let's look into that. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead so that many said, he is dead. Now I have to give you a slight warning today that today in this message, I'm going to diagnose the problem. But we're not going to have time today to get through to the solution. But next week, we will. Okay? So everyone smile at me real big. Let me see your pearly whites and say, I love you anyway, John. Okay, thank you. So today, we're going to diagnose the problem. 
have a little look at it, probably locate ourselves, and then thank the Lord next week is only seven days away. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. What I believe this man was trying to articulate is this. When Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. What this man was trying to articulate is this. Jesus, I do believe this, but I can't stand on it. I can't grasp it. I can't trust it. I can't, I can't walk on the water of this. I have found myself in this position many, many times where I have a belief system. For example, I believe that by Jesus' stripes I'm healed. I sincerely believe that. But there are times when I'm facing something and I think, but I, I, I can't stand on that. I want to, Toby, I want to. I want to believe it. I want to be able to step on that and have such strength that I would, I would look the devil in the face, let alone you or my own self in the mirror and say, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. I, I, I want to. I can say the words. Of course I can. But it's not with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made. It's not we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written. We believe and therefore we speak. I'm saying the words, but there's no weight to it. Even though I sincerely believe that by his stripes I'm healed. I'll give you another example. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, My God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I believe that with all my heart. I've heard that verse since I was knee high to a grasshopper. I sincerely believe that my God will supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But there are some times when I'm looking at my life and there's more month than money and I struggle. Sometimes God puts a project in front of me and I want to step out into it, but I think, but I don't have the money, even though he said he'd supply all the need. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And this man, I think, was articulating what many, many, many of us have felt time and time again. Jesus, I know it's possible, but I can't do it. I know if someone else were to pray, maybe if, if John was facing that situation, Lord, I, I, know, I know you're capable, but I don't know if you'll do it for me. Jesus encountered this, I believe it's Matthew chapter 8. He came down from the mountain and um, people started coming around him and a, 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 a leper came to him and said, Lord, if you're willing, I know you can make me clean. That was a, another way of saying, Lord, I believe, I know you can. Help my unbelief. I don't know if you will. I know that by your stripes I'm healed, but I don't know if I'm going to be healed right now when we pray. I used to say all the time, if you want prayer for healing, come on up. I began changing that saying, don't come for prayer, come to be healed. If you're ready to be healed, come up. There's a video clip I wanted to show, but I wasn't able to get it to the guys in time. I've shared this story before. I, you know, I'll play it next week because it's better just, it's better watched it. Uh, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Let me give you another example of this. In Matthew chapter 14. Now in the fourth watch of the night, verse 25, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And the disciples saw him walking on the sea and they were troubled saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it's me, don't be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's you, command me come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But, everyone say but. But, when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So let's analyze what's going on here. Their disciples are in the boat. Jesus comes walking on the water. Do they, at that, and they, they cry out, they think it's a ghost. And then Jesus said, no, it's me. And they recognize his voice. And so Peter says, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. I don't think he was questioning whether it was Jesus or not. Because if, if it wasn't Jesus, so if I said, Peter, come, he'd have sunk immediately. 
Because, but he knew if Jesus gives a word, you can walk on it. So he said, Lord, tell me to come. And the minute Jesus said, come, he knew I can stand on that. He wasn't questioning whether it was Jesus he needed a word to stand on. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Jesus said, come. So Peter now gets out of the boat and walks on the water. It wasn't he walked on the water. What did he do? You mean he walked on the water? According to the Bible, yes, Peter and Jesus are both walking on the water. There's 11 disciples in the boat, and there's one disciple and one master walking on the water. Did Peter believe it was possible to walk on the water? Yes. Why? Two reasons. One, Jesus was doing it. And two, he was doing it. So then something happened. Then he began to look around at the wind and the waves, and he began to be afraid, and he started to sink. So what happened when he started to sink? What changed? I don't believe he stopped believing it was possible to walk on water, because even as he was sinking, Jesus was doing it. And when he looked back to very recent history, he had done it. He just stopped believing he could do it right then. We know God can heal. We've seen him heal others. We know God can heal because we've seen him heal us in days gone by. I just don't know that if I pray, I'll get it now. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Peter did not question the possibility he just didn't expect it to happen right there and then. Many of us have a strong belief system, but we don't have strong faith. Faith, you could put it this way, faith is the activity of your belief system. It's the exercising of what you believe. Faith moves the hand of God. Faith moves mountains. But faith won't move anything till it first moves you. And something in you begins to stir, begins to change, begins to connect from, from going to, I, I know it's possible. I know it, I know it theoretically. I know God can do it. I, I, know, I know it's happened to other people. I've read it in the Bible. I, I, I've watched it on YouTube. But if I stand and pray right now, I don't know that my foot will be healed. Maybe. It's possible. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I believe most of us live... Right where that man whose son was being thrown into the fire. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. So Peter did not stop believing it was possible. Jesus was doing it. He just done it. He lost faith in his ability to do it under the current circumstances. Have you ever had a situation where you're looking at your month and you're looking at your money and there's not enough money. And you know that God has supplied for you before. And you know the stories you grew up in church of God providing again and again. But when you look at the current circumstances, you don't believe that God will do it now. I believe. Help my unbelief. I am telling you, Christian life gets very, very exciting when you transition into the faith place. It changes everything. So, let me read this again, and then I'll be done here in just a minute. Y'all still okay? You're very quiet. Are you okay? All right. Peter didn't stop believing it was possible. Jesus was doing it. He had just done it. He lost faith in his ability to do it in the current circumstances. Faith says now. Belief is content that it's theoretically possible. That maybe on another day. That if I prayed a bit more, if I was in a different church, if I sort myself out, if I become holier, if it was Friday. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Most of us live in belief, but not in faith. You could put it this way. Uh, let's, let's close with looking at Hebrews chapter 11. 
I told you, today we're going to diagnose the problem. Tomorrow we'll, we'll point out and look to see how do we transition. Because I don't want to live with a belief system alone. I want to live and walk by faith. The Bible says that's how I please God. And the Bible says even the demons believe what we believe and tremble. So having a belief system is not enough. But when you step into that place of faith, oh, I'm excited about this. I love this. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the present moment. Now faith is. Belief acknowledges it's possible. Faith says, it's mine, I have it now. So the Bible says here, faith is the substance of things hoped for. I would say faith, hope, say hope. Say it again, say faith and hope. There's another verse that says, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 13, thereabouts, and now abides faith, help me, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Are they the same thing? No. Is love the same as faith? No. Now, faith works by love, but it's not the same thing. Is love the same thing as hope? No. They work together, but they're not the same thing. Are hope and faith the same thing? No. Hope is a joyful anticipation that you will see the goodness of God in your life. You know a person that's full of hope because they have a joyful anticipation. It's cloudy and they're still smiley. Like that song. Um, Even when the darkest clouds are in the sky, you mustn't cry and you mustn't sigh. Spread a little happiness as you go by. You know that one? Okay, you look at me like a complete moron. Please tell me you've heard that song. You've not heard the song. Wave them if you heard the song. Okay, sing it with me. Even when the darkest clouds are in the sky, and you mustn't sigh, spread a little. Okay, the rest you need to learn the song. Hope is a joyful anticipation that you are going to see the goodness of God in your circumstance. Financially, you're concerned, there's problem ahead, your company's downsizing, but when you're full of hope, you have a joyful anticipation that you're going to see and experience the goodness of God in your circumstances. The doctors have given you a bad report, but you have a joyful expectation that you're going to see the goodness of God in your circumstances. That's hope. We ought to have hope. Hope is like, it's like um, someone says, like the blueprint. It lets you know what's coming. It lets you know what you're building, what you're dreaming for, what you're, what you're looking for. If you don't have hope, you have nothing to aim for. You have no target. You have nothing to get excited about in the morning. It, it, it gives you vision. It gives you dream. It's, you know, you need to write down your, your, the things you're hoping for. But the Bible says, but faith is the substance of things you're hoping for. There are many people that live in hope. Hope says one day. Faith says I have it now. Hope says, I know God's gonna. Faith says, guess what God has done? Faith says, hope says, I know that he can heal me. Faith says, by his stripes I'm healed. And it runs. And it runs. It's, you can touch it. You can feel it. You can, you can handle it. And we have to. You and me both, we have to move from, from belief, a good belief system, a good core value, a, a, a meaningful set of values, into an f- active, living, breathing faith. Because the Bible says that's how we please God. Faith moves mountains, it obtains promises, it shut the mouths of lions. By it the elders obtained a good report. I mean, there is, there's a whole chapter on the things that faith does. Hope let them know what they were believing for. Faith brought it into their circumstance. I'm going to pause it there because if we don't go home, we can't come back. And I I, I want to be able to really dig into, okay, how do we transition? 
How do we get into, how do we get into that place called faith? I, is it possible for you? Is it something for God, that God has for some, someone else, but you're always going to kind of be frustrated on the outside? No. Not when you learn. Not when you learn how the Word works in this area. We're going to look at some spiritual hacks, as it were. The things that you begin to discover. If, if you do this, faith grows in a hurry. I mean, honestly, in a hurry. It's not complicated. The Bible says we're to have faith as a little child. So if, if a child can understand it, then there's hope for you and me, right? We're all right. We're going to learn. We're going to learn. So, okay. Let's pray. It's, um, it's a teaching session. Do you know what I mean? It's a teaching session. And I feel like God really wants you and me. I mean, I'm learning and growing so much through this as well. So I'm, I'm not the teacher. I'm the big mouth. But the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And he teaches us through the word. It's the light for our feet, the lamp for our path. Let's pray. Dear Holy Spirit, please teach us. Teach me. Angela, Levi, my mother, Pastor Ian, Pastor Mindy, our elders, our coordinators. Teach the person that walked through the door for the first time today. Teach the person that's watching on the other side of the world right now. Dear Holy Spirit, would you please teach us how to walk by faith and not by sight. Take the things of the Word, our belief system, Help us transition into faith. Lord, that the things that we are hoping for, that we know we see in your word, that they would become substance in our lives. Holy Spirit, show us. Teach us. Reveal things to us. Lord, even before next Sunday, as we look into the word, open our eyes to see what we need to see. And Lord Jesus that we will glorify you. Help us to glorify you.